Good morning and welcome to Hardin County Commissioner's Court. Today is Tuesday, July the 9th, 2024. It is 10 a.m. and we have uh, four members of the Commissioner's Court present. Commissioner Kirkendall will be absent today. This meeting is hereby called to order. Please rise for the invitation. <coughs> Mr. Cook will deliver the invitation and lead us in the pledge. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us. Please watch over us today as we conduct the business of the county. I ask this in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Item 3 is to consider and possibly approve the June 25th, 2024 regular meeting minutes presented by the county clerk. So moved. Second. A motion by Commissioner Young, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Number four, consider approval of request to cancel all registered claims from June 25th, 2024, and approval of today's cash statement presented by the county treasurer, Mrs. McWilliams. Good, Good morning, morning ma'am. I'm asking the court to release me of the liability of $1,526,737.60. On our cash report summary and general checking account, we have $1,148,342.12. First Financial Bank General Checking Special Money Market, $24,500. $45,206.31. Text Pool General, $345,875.47 for a total in cash fund of $26,074,629.72. Have a motion by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Number four. That was number four. Number five, authorization to pay county bills presented by the county auditor, Mrs. Angela Gore. Good morning. Good morning. The pre-approved expenditures for June the 26th through the 27th is $970,515.63. Pre-approved expenditures for July 2nd through the 3rd is $45,896.03. <laughs> Expenditures for Commissioner's Court today are $153,210.53. For total expenditures and transfers are $1,169,622.19. Gross payroll for June the 27th is $620,871.28. The total transfers for that payroll was $1,071,096.71. A revised payroll, a reissued payroll check on June the 27th, the gross amount was $1,960, and the total transfers for that pay, paycheck was $2,412.95. Please pay the bill. I have a motion by Commissioner Cook, second by Commissioner Young. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Gore. Thank you. Number six, consider approval of request by Ms. Sharon Whitley, Health Director, to authorize the county judge to sign outdoor, outdoor advertising contract renewal with John Gannon Incorporated for Hardin County Women, Infant, and Children's Billboard Advertising. This will be funded 100% utilizing grant funds. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Number seven, consider approval of request by Ms. Whitley to authorize the county judge to execute a lease agreement renewal between Baptist Hospitals of Southeast Texas and Hardin County for lease office space located at 603 FM 418 West Suite G2, I'm sorry, it's G4, Silsby, Texas, also funded 100% by grant funds. So moved. Second. A motion by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Cook. Ms. Uh, Jones, is this just a renewal uh, yes. For another year? Yes, sir. Any other changes to that contract? No, sir. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Number eight, consider approval of request by Ms. Whitley to authorize the county judge to execute professional services contract renewal between Hardin County on behalf of Women, Infant, and Children's Division and Michelle Miller to provide nutrition counseling services effective August 1st 
2024 through July 31st, 2025. That motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Young. Any changes to that? Just the, just the dates. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Number nine, consider approval of request by the Chief, Chief Juvenile Probation Officer Monica Kelly for approval of outside detention contract with Wood County. You just add another county. Will. He's doing such a great job. We just got him wanting to come on in. Yes, sir. Well, so. All right. That motion was Commissioner Cooper and seconded by Commissioner Young. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Anything you want to say? Uh, no. All right, thank you. Thank you for not sending Jared. Oh, there he is next to you. Well, I was just going to say, I don't think we'll be coming back now for any more contracts because I think we've covered all of them. We're, we're close. How many does that, how many counties does that? 25. Good. Uh, actually, Wood County is about three and a half hours away. It's north of Tyler. They may and may never use us. They may have to use us. They're just too larger facilities or stay full. Thank you. Number 10, consider approval of request by Mrs. Misty Sims, purchasing agent, to present results of bids received for overlaying approximately 1,450 feet on Village Creek Road, located in Precinct 1, and possibly award to successful bidder. Good morning. Good morning. Bids were opened on June 27, 2024, and the purchasing opening at 2 p.m. Pat Moya and Stacy Eckert were present, and I received one bid from CMM Construction for $3.75. Commissioner Cooper? I move to accept the uh, bid. Second. That motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner <coughs> Cook. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Number 11, consider and possibly authorize a purchasing agent to sell a Ryobi electric riding lawnmower, serial number ending in 0008, utilizing Renee Bates Auctioneers at ReneeBates.com. Second. That motion by Commissioner Young, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? What did this board come from? I believe it was Seeds by Sheriff's Office. Seeds by the Sheriff's Office. Oh, okay. Okay. And it says it's electric, huh? It was found property. Okay. It was abandoned found property. It's actually almost brand new. Hmm. So talk it up so we get a lot of money for it. <laughs> almost <laughs> brand new, he said. It was stolen, but nobody knows where. Was that in my precinct? Actually, on county property. Yeah. On the buyouts in Pinewood. Hmm. Stash. Hmm. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Number 12, consider and possibly authorize the purchasing agent to sell items seized by the sheriff's office, including lawnmowers, lawn equipment, tools, baseball memorabilia, fishing equipment, and other miscellaneous items. Second. That motion by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? We do plan on using other banks for that one as well. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? That'll all be on ReneeBates.com. Chair says it's all in great shape, right? <laughs> bid high, bid high. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. 13, consider approval of request by Mrs. Sims, purchasing agent, to present results of bids received for a 2006 Ford F-550 cab and chassis western hauler, bid number ending in 6136, and a 2007 Ferrara mobile command trailer, bid number ending in 7088 package, and possibly award to a successful bidder and or take other action as the court deems necessary. Ms. Sims? Bids were opened on July 3rd at 2 p.m. in the purchasing department. We received two bids. Stacy Eckert, Pat Boyette, and Mike Kester were present. The first one was from Integrated Technology Services for $42,500. The second one was from Alex Poliakoff. I'm probably not saying that right. That's how I would say it. $8,000. Sheriff, is there anything you want to say regarding this or not say regarding this? Just, 
I mean, we're we're at the the crossroads of it's almost twenty years old, and the required maintenance, the upkeep, the money we spent keeping the truck up and the trailer, and lack of lack of deployments and usability. I just we're we're at that point where there's other things that I think would be a lot more beneficial to us user friendly wise. Unfortunately, having to go about going out for bids in this person, I mean, you're, you're, you have to really toe the line on how you move those assets that were bought with, with FEMA funds back in the day. And we just don't have a lot of wiggle room. And unfortunately, it's we would love to have more money. We think it should bring more money, but when you look out across the U.S. with those kind of trailers in that shape, in that year model, um, they're twenty to forty thousand dollars is what we're seeing them go for, and of course the truck is a 20, 2006, so it's an eighteen year old truck, and it's a good market there, but it's low mileage, but it's also eighteen years old. Yeah. So you just we, we all want more money. We'd love to have bids come in higher. I'm fortunate mm -hmm. that we got the bid that we did, but running it again or a fourth or a fifth time, I just don't know that we're going to get anything else. So. Um, I mean, I welcome conversations. Mr. Cook <coughs> intimately knows the unit was instrumental in getting it here and probably knows more about it than anybody in the courthouse. I just, I'm afraid we're at a point where we're going to have to make the decision to either keep it and spend a lot of money year to year to maintain it, get rid of it, and get something else. We've uh, tried to sell it twice or three times? Twice. Well, this is the second time. Yeah, the yeah. first time we got no bids. <coughs> Well, we followed the purchasing policy and advertised it. Uh, highest bid we got was the third, uh, third bid fourth. Is that a gas or a diesel? Diesel. And I'm assuming uh, <coughs> we bought it as a package deal, so we're required to sell it as a package. Would we have uh, maybe got more selling? We talked to a few people that seem to be interested in the uh, truck more so than the trailer, but just, you know, I had a couple people say, hey, if I was bidding, I would bid this much, and it was nothing like what we're getting now. You know, and they didn't come forward to bid because they had no use for the trailer, and ITS tells us they have a use for the trailer more so, but we were afraid one of them wouldn't sell if we split them up, and then we'll be stuck with something, and if we sold the truck and didn't sell the trailer, how would we move the trailer, so. Well, just like you said, Mike uh, called me last night and, and said just looking around at other similar units throughout the uh, nation, this is pretty close or pretty well done run. And, and I had to propose when I when I got permission for us to, to get rid of that back through the, up the chain through the governor's office and to get permission for us to liquidate that. Um, I gave them supporting documentation of stuff that we had found out for sale uh, that was like and comparable. And that bid's not that far off. You know, uh, my, my recommendation is that we sell um, with some reservation. You know, I, I, I did. I, I wish we could have gotten more, but I don't think holding any longer or doing anything else different is going to generate us any other money. And so, staff's recommendation to the court would be that we accept the, the bid. Okay, sure. Move to approve. Second. A motion by Commissioner Cooper to accept the high bid from ITS. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Seconded by Commissioner Young. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Sim. Number 14, consider approval of request by Mr. Alex Parker, Flood Plain Administrator, to approve replat of west half of Lot 20, all of Lot 21, a portion of Lot 22 and Lot 23, in the lots one through seven of the William Weiss subdivision in the day land and cattle survey, abstract number 607, Hardin County, Texas, located in precinct three. Commissioner Young. I have uh, <coughs> discussions with Alex and the engineers have approved it. We have a little bit of back and forth uh, because it's an existing <coughs> subdivision that they're creating a new subdivision, um, but everything has been satisfied, so I move to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Young, seconded by Commissioner Cooper to approve. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Consider approval of request by Mr. Alex Parker, Flood Plain Administrator, to purchase the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 crew cab, crew cab truck from Lake Country Chevrolet in the amount of $48,468 for the Flood Plain Administration Department utilizing a cooperative purchasing program agreement and amend the fiscal year 24 budget as follows. <clears throat> $49,718 out of the contingency general line item or from that line item to fuel and oil in the uh, floodplain department, $750, creating a new line item, 010490330. $500 into auto maintenance and repairs, 010490454, a new line item. And another new line item, 010094574, auto purchase, <clears throat> in the amount of $48,468. Uh, as you know, Alex had requested that we budget for this next year. However, the truck's available now. I talked to Mr. Durbin myself last Tuesday. This one is there and it's in stock. It's not a police vehicle. It's a, a regular Chevrolet Silverado. And uh, we could go ahead and buy it now rather than uh, budgeting it next year. It's a vehicle that uh, our need that he has now. And, and uh, if we could do it now rather than wait, I would recommend that we do. I think the code should be 490 instead of 49 for auto purchases. Oh, it is 49? So the fuel and oil and auto purchase would be 409? Okay. All right, instead of 490, it's 409, and each one of them, right? Yes, sir. The last one's right, the two in the middle are wrong. Okay. You're correct. Thank you all for catching that. Move to approve. Second. All right, motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Cook to approve. Any discussion? It was there last Tuesday. It was there last Tuesday, and hopefully it's still there today. Hopefully he can find it. Who knows where it's at? Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. You want to say anything? Thank you. Yes, sir. Number 16, consider approval of request by Mr. Dale Wolker, Hardin County Airport, Hawthorne Field, FBO, to authorize the county judge to sign amendment number two to the Texas Department of Transportation Airport Project Participation Agreement 2320 KMTZE for improvements to the Hardin County Airport Hawthorne Field and consider approval to pay Texas Department of Transportation invoice in the amount of $7,240 and amend the fiscal year 24 budget as follows. Decrease expenditures from 01041800 contingency general in the amount of $7,240. Increase expenditures in line item 01070022 transfers to airport funds in the same amount. Increase revenue in line item 02239000, transfers and general fund in the same amount. And increase expenditures by creating a new line item 02266442, engineering services in the same amount, $7,240. Mr. Wilford, anything you want to add regarding that? The actual cost is 72400 is that right? Uh, yes. With the county portion yes. being this the 7240 This is 10% of the cost overrun. Okay. Thank you. Move Mr. Cooper, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I think overall, uh, when we first started, we were given one amount, and then throughout the process, things uh, went up. We, we thought we were going to have one set amount for this, and of course it went up, so this was what we owe them. And this is for the hydraulic study on the drainage portion of it out there. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and the planning. Uh, and the, the planning. Project, correct. Which we were presented with uh, the meeting. Next, uh, I believe next court we'll bring uh, the, the big project in for approval, but we needed this part right here to come up with exactly what we needed to do out there. Uh, and once all that came through, of course, everything was separate than this went up too. So they went back to the drawing board and actually brought some of the costs down. But uh, 
this work had already been done, so I would move that uh, we approve this. Second. A motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Cook to approve as presented. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. 17, consider request by Commissioner Cook to adopt resolution 21-24, authorizing and approving execution of an agreement with Cadence Equipment Finance, a division of Cadence Bank, to finance a 2024 Kubota MS, I'm sorry, M6S111SHDC four-wheel drive tractor equipped with a Terrain King KB22 22-foot boom mower for the R&B Ford Department as approved in Commissioner's Court on June 25th. So moved, approved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Young, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> motion passes. Number 18, consider acceptance of the audited financial statements for the year ending September 30th, 2023 for Hardin County Emergency Services District Number 1. Mrs. Gore, have you had a chance to review that? Yes, sir. Everything's in order. All right. Thank you. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Young, seconded by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? I think we're still lacking a couple of these ESD financial statements. I know uh, a few of them have contacted me to let me know that their auditors are running behind. We're running into that ourselves with our own audit. Uh, if they are working on them, they, they will get them to us. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion passes. Number 19 is a budget workshop. A workshop with elected and appointed officials to discuss any and all fiscal year 2025 proposed budget expenditures, including salaries, fringe benefits, retirement rate, longevity pay, and operation expenses. We do have one special request that we want to talk about today, and that's from the county attorney. And we have a uh, submittal here from him. And it looks like an increase in wages for two people. Uh, one of those is the uh, legal secretary for pretrial diversion. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. And the other one's also a pretrial diversion legal secretary? She's okay. just a legal secretary. She's not, a, she's not under the pretrial diversion umbrella really yet. Okay. Um, if you approve this, then she would be getting some funds from pretrial diversion. So go ahead. So essentially, um, when we took on the Senate Bill 22 money, I made Kalea pretty much a full-time back. And so she's added a lot of new tasks what's, to her responsibility. What's that? Uh, victim assistance coordinator. Okay. So she does yeah, so she does a lot of additional tasks for my office. And so because of that, I've had to move some pretrial duties from Kalea to Talisha and to Kelly. And so based upon that, um, I am requesting from our pretrial revenue that we receive uh, for the program that we run in our office to use some of those funds to give them a little increase due to the tasks that they've taken on. And so it's basically 2000 annually for each of them for doing those tasks. And that would not come from the general fund. That would come from my budget that I receive for pretrial diversion revenue. And no problem bringing in enough revenue to cover that, I'm sure. We have plenty enough for the next year. Our, our budget has decreased significantly, but it's our uh, expenditures for this year is going to decrease significantly because of Kalea's pay coming now from the back side of the Senate Bill 22. So our pretrial diversion budget is going to be significantly lower. I would say around $20,000 lower than it was in the last budget. Even with this 4,000 offset, that's what you're looking at? I would say, we've been working on the numbers for the last few days, so I, I still think it's gonna be around 20 less, 20,000 less. And this equates to just under a dollar an hour increase for each of those employees. Anything else you wanna add? That's it. Any questions from the court? Did anybody have a problem including that in the proposed budget? I'll get it included. Actually, uh, can you get that? Help me get that included because I don't touch those. <laughs> <laughs> Thank for, you. For obvious reasons. Thank you. Thank you all. Speaking of uh, Candace, she has uh, done quite a bit of work over the past uh, five to seven days, and she has uh, most, maybe not 100%, uh, but what about 97% of all of the salaries and fringes are entered to date. Uh, I just printed out a few worksheets for me to review this morning. I also have the uh, actual budget ready to pull up. If anybody wants to look at any particular budget, I can pull that up and show it on the screen. <clears throat> uh, just looking at the Road and Bridge Department, because it's a lot smaller, so I was able to print the whole thing out. 
looking at the total increases of uh, expenditures for all four road and bridge departments plus the general road and bridge uh, worksheet that we have here, the increase from 24 to 25, this includes all the salaries and, and fringes with a 3% increase, the longevity pay, also the increase in health insurance at roughly 5%, is that correct? Yes, sir. And a few other changes that we made in Road and Bridge, the total increase is going to be $190,000 for fiscal year 25. I believe that with the uh, increase in property values, and I also have uh, several other increases that I've already looked at making for uh, just other general revenue line items, such as the uh, uh, license fees that come into the uh, Road and Bridge budget. Uh, each of the JP traffic fines, there's a few increases and a few decreases with an overall increase there of about 3,000. Altogether, I think that we can increase the revenue other than ad valorem at 83,000. And then I believe with the increase in property values, once we get a tax rate and see how that figures in, I don't think we'll have any problem covering the 190,000 extra. Anything that y'all want to discuss there regarding Road and Bridge? Any questions about that that I might be able to answer or at least have <coughs> for the next meeting? I know it's a uh, whole separate uh, budget, but as far as the uh, lateral road funds, when, when does that money come in? I mean, when, when, we, when he's figuring it into the budget, mm -hmm. we get them yearly. Mm -hmm. He goes ahead and figures it, even though they have not come in. That is correct. Okay. Yes, it's estimated, but I don't know what time of the year it comes in, but it's one payment. And it's split evenly among all right. four of them, right? I, I don't really know. Y'all might have knowledge of that, but I think it has I think it has something to do with that annual road report entry. I don't know that for a fact. Are those federal or state funds? It comes up from the state, but it may originate at the federal right. level. Yeah. I knew you'd ask me something I wasn't ready for. <laughs> On the uh, general fund, I just printed one little worksheet here. It's quite a bit of an increase, more than I thought it would be. Of course, uh, we'll take the 48000 out for the truck. Uh, but before taking that out, it's 927000 increase uh, with all of the additional items that we've added. And it hadn't been a whole lot of operational items that we added. Most of this is salary fringes and then that 5% increase in health insurance. We're leaving the retirement rate the same, um, which is 15.31, is that right? Candace, about offhand. The required rate is only like 11.27, but we leave that at 15.31 to try to help off, offset the uh, unfunded liability that we have. We could look at lowering that if we wanted to, but um, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, once again, I have not touched any of the uh, <clears throat> revenue line items that are other than I had below them, like I have in Road and Bridge. It's easy to do that in Road and Bridge. It's uh, not quite as easy in the in the general fund, but we will have some items there. One of them that I can think of right off the bat is the interest line item that we get from the the bank and the uh, <clears throat> the money that we have in uh, tech school and in the money market account. Uh, we collected quite a bit more interest than we budgeted for last year, so I can increase that some. I still think we won't have any problem offsetting this large increase. It's going to be tight. We have to look at some other uh, cuts to make that I didn't look at the first two times around that I've gone through this budget. But uh, I still think there won't be any problem funding that. Again, we don't know exactly what the uh, tax rate is going to be, so it's hard to see what the ad valorem revenue is going to be. But with the uh, property values going up, I still think we'll be able to offset it. And I'll be working on that. I was hoping to have a draft budget ready for everybody, and Candace worked very hard to make sure that I had one, but with everything going on yesterday, I just didn't even have time to look, to, to look at it. Will we file a proposed by next uh, court? Or I'll have a draft ready for you at the next court on the 23rd, but we won't have our rates from the, or our uh, certified values from the appraisal district until the 25th, so I'm looking at a special meeting the following Tuesday, which is July the 30th. 
Yeah. Everybody here available? Probably, yeah. You'll be there. What about uh, yeah. you'll be here? When, uh, when exactly is the leaving? Do you know? 27th. Okay. 34th. Well, to get those values on the 25th, it takes Sherman in two or three days to do what they have to do to give us our, our rates. So we couldn't have a special meeting before the 27th. But I'll have information to you. We can talk about that before then. Uh, I, I hope to have the, uh, I will have a proposed budget filed by the 31st, 30th or 31st. And then uh, that will keep us on track to have our hearings that we have to have in the month of August. And then hopefully file a, uh, an adopted budget at the last meeting in August, which I think is the 27th, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have a calendar in front of me, but whatever the fourth Tuesday in August is, we should file an adopted budget on that day. Is there anything y'all want to look at or talk about or anybody else here that wants to talk about anything regarding the 25 budget? Oh. Sheriff, there's one thing that we talked about two weeks ago in, in your budget for next year, and that's regarding the lateral transfers that you were talking about bringing people in from other departments. Uh, are you going to bring that up as an action item at the next meeting? I can. Uh, I actually thought Well, there's a consensus to do it for the next budget year, and so that's no problem, but I thought you were talking about, and it wasn't your idea, I want to say it might have been Chris's, of going ahead and doing it now, and so if, if you want to do it before fiscal year 25, and you want to bring it up as an action item at the next meeting. I'm, I'm not inclined to start anything until October 1. Okay. So if that pleases the court, I'd rather just leave it and have a clean start. That's good to start on October. Sounds good. Well, the consensus was to do that for up to an LE4 or a CO4, right. starting October 1st. Right. Is there any other discussion that, is that how y'all remember it anyway? Is there any other discussion y'all want to have? Did we do corrections? Sir? That's for corrections as well? Yeah, corrections and law enforcement, right? Yeah, we have on both the proposals. Probably the corrections will very rarely, if ever, be taken advantage of because I just don't get that many jailers that come here with jail experience. They're almost all brand new to the profession. So, and in fact, if I look back, I've only got, uh, I think, one or two in the last four years that had county jail experience. You know, before we, uh, before October 1st, we probably should go ahead and put that as an, as an action item so we get it in the minutes. Okay. Let's do that. Sometime, anytime before, uh, actually, I'd, I'd like to do it in August. That way, when we file the adopted budget, August, the whatever date that, that is, we have that action item handled and, and it's clean. The, uh, Two weeks from today, I'll be in Sheriff's Conference and in, in Annual Training Conference, but I can have um, Mark present that. I can have it ready for you to look at in two weeks. Yeah, so we could do it then on the 23rd, or if you want to do it August the uh, 13th, we could do it then. Either, either day would be fine. Okay. If you want to wait till you're back, that's fine, and if you want to have the Chief handle that, that's fine what, too. What was, the, what was the final word on and, I, and, I, have, and I, I guess I can see this more as the proposed gets out there, but for my employees that are not going to be subject to the longevity, new longevity pay, that returned, uh, that left and returned and had qualifying prior service, are we moving their longevity pay scale, for lack of a better word, our LE level or CO level? I had proposed and, pre and presented in mind to move them up appropriately wherever they would fall as if they were still here. And there wasn't but two or three of them. Was that, was that approved? Was that, it was in the numbers that I sent you. There's two and it would yeah. be included in the 25 budget. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? Well, if they're tied that's only for hearted. longevity, though. That's for nothing else. Yeah, it's just for longevity pay. So it wouldn't change their LE4 or anything higher they than they don't get longevity pay. There's a kicker. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that so is their would. longevity pay. That is their longevity pay. So that's right. Because your numbers aren't like 
the numbers we propose. So if I'm understanding right, there's two separate things. One of them is a, an employee with years of service with Hardin County that's left and come back. They could go all the way up to the top if that's how many years they have, if it's with Hardin County. But let's say you hire somebody in that's never worked with Hardin County before and they're coming in from Jefferson County and they've got 10 years of experience and he wants to be able to hire them in at a three or a four, he, he would be able to do that. That's a whole separate item, right? Correct. Okay. And we talked about exactly. being in agreement to both. I just and and we're only talking two, <clears throat> or two employees, Catherine Williams and, and uh, Blake Brooks. The, there was a couple other that we thought was going to be in there, but they actually, um, they actually either retired or pulled money or had some other qualifying event that wouldn't make them uh, eligible. Yeah. yeah. Does that answer that? I would say that we would have to because we're doing it on longevity for, for, everybody. for everybody. And that is their longevity sale. It's going to benefit them more because of, of the money. But because we did it over here, I think we would have to. Second part of that question, Judge, is for those employees that are not on a multi level pay step for longevity pay. It was my understanding that they would be included in the county's longevity pay program. Yes, sir. Lieutenant and above. Is that how it's going to be proposed and presented? Uh, I have not looked at that in detail. I assume so. But let me ask you this. We set it up when we restructured to where there would be a never, there would never be, in other words, if, you, if a new sheriff come in, a new chief deputy, we won't put Mark in there because he's got 30 something years, where this lieutenant is going to be here for 30 years and a new where he would make more from when we restructured. Is that going to affect that? Uh, I don't think it's going to affect that at all because, I mean, our salaries are set. There's two pay grades for lieutenant, and it's plus or minus five years. A lieutenant for captain, chief is one pay grade. That's what he makes, period. And, and so he would be rewarded for years of service Whereas if he came in first day on the job, yeah, that's his salary, but he's not gonna have any longevity to go with it, like say Mark has now while he's here. Um, and, I, and I don't, we, we came to a consensus in the salary committee on that, and, and that's what was presented here, but I just wanna make for sure that that didn't fall through the cracks for that unique set of employees that are not gonna be on the longevity pay plan, but they don't have a pay scale, pay scale step through us for years of service. They only have one plus or minus five years. So that's how we did it, right? Yeah. And that's how I proposed it in the numbers that I sent you. So but I didn't do the longevity side on that one. Whenever I get the uh, draft ready to send to the commissioners, it'll go to all elected officials and department heads too. So I want y'all to look at it good before we talk about it at the next meeting on the twenty third. Thank you. When you won't be here. But Mark will handle it. Mark two. Okay. All right. Anything else regarding the twenty-five budget that anybody would like to talk about, ask about, anything at all? Candace is sure doing great. Thank she you. Is. Thank you for letting her do it. She is. She's worked very hard on it. All weekend. All weekend, all night. <laughs> what about July fourth? Did you work on it then too? Mm -hmm. And July fourth. Dedicated. Thank you. Anybody else on the budget workshop? If not, we will end that. All right. One other item, that's right. Discussion. I was waiting on them to say adjourn, but <laughs> surprised we didn't. You get my glasses back on. <clears throat> Number 20, discussion on any other non-agenda item without taking action, including reports from elected officials or department heads or announcements which may be of interest to the public. 
One announcement that may be of interest to the public was I learned uh, sometime between 8 and 9 o'clock this morning that FEMA is, uh, they think it's too unsafe here to have the DRC open, so the DRC is closed, and I don't know when it will reopen. It might be tomorrow, it might be another day, but because of the storm that came through here yesterday, we're all here working yesterday and today, uh, they think it's not safe enough. So one of these days they'll decide it is and they'll come back, and I'll let everybody know when it's back open. And that's everybody, not just FEMA. The SDA is not here, and, and uh, there's nobody here at the DRC. Uh, Natasha? And then uh, as far as the storm goes, Tropical Storm Barrel barreled through here yesterday. Um, I don't think it was any worse than the storms that we dealt with between <laughs> April and May. Do you all agree? Yeah, I agree. Sheriff, do you agree? I agree. We have some damages. There's some, there's probably quite a few trees down. I think uh, you had four. About seven. Seven in your precinct. Uh, several all over the county. A lot of them on textile highways. They've all been cleared off. The roads and the highways are back open. I know there's three homes that got trees on them. I sure hate to see that. There's probably more that we don't know about. But uh, no report of any injuries, Sheriff. No. So thank goodness for that. And uh, we'll uh, get it cleaned up and go back to normal, just like uh, we have many times since April the 8th. A uh, lot of power is still out. I think around 3,807. That's Entergy and Chico. Uh, Chico is about 1590 of that, and Entergy is the rest. Mm -hmm. I know they're working hard to get it back up and running. Entergy is going to have a conference call today about 1130. Aaron, if you're available, we'll, we'll do that in my office. And anything I learn from that, I'll be sure and pass it on to everybody. Anything else that anybody wants to add about Beryl or Burl, have you spoke to Kurt? All right. Any other announcements or discussion items that y'all want to bring up? Anybody at all? Now, move to adjourn. Second. Have a motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Young, that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're adjourned.